high school and college teachers in CTE, career and technical education programs, are always reviewing their curricula to keep up with changes happening in the business world. That's especially true in graphics, design, and media technologies. We've been through a lot of digital transformation in the media business. Desktop publishing, computer graphics, the web, digital cameras, digital video, mixed reality, CTE teachers, and their outside partners from industry and research organizations are always thinking about better ways to link schools to the world of work as work itself evolves. In the year 2022, we saw some scary smart artificial intelligence burst into the graphics field and CTE educators should be preparing for the new ways that graphic communications will be created and produced in the age of AI-generated art and what that will mean for the career paths of our graduates. The new generative art systems look like magic. Type in a plain English prompt describing what you want, and the software creates a new image to match your instructions, usually in just a few seconds. Here's an astronaut playing basketball with cats in space. In June of 2022, we ran a professional development session in Brooklyn for CTE teachers introducing the basic concepts of generative art. At the time, the Dolly 2 system from the OpenAI Foundation was breaking news, and we showed some interesting demos. In April, Dolly 2 access was limited to some 400 specially chosen users, but within a few months competing research groups from tech giants Google, NVIDIA, and Facebook, and live e-working products from startups Midjourney and Stable Diffusion came charging into the market. It sometimes seems a new breakthrough happens every week or so. Dolly 2, Midjourney and Stable Diffusion are today's online leaders, but most of the underlying tech is open source, and people are building spin-off systems for niche applications like anime art, stylized selfies, and photorealistic imaging. Plus there are systems in Chinese and Russian as well. You can access some sites online for free, on some you can pay per prompt. You can even download the open source code in the Python language to your own supercharged PC, so you can generate all your art for free. Someday all art studios and CTE graphics programs will have their own PC-based generative art systems in-house. Over 15 million pioneering artists are already generating tens of millions of images with these products. And the software is evolving rapidly as people get the hang of it. Creators are sharing their images and prompts online to Reddit and Instagram, and many Discord servers. Here are some examples from lexica.art for stable diffusion output. In the new discipline called prompt engineering, we're all learning what works best, how English words and phrases are linked to a dataset of hundreds of millions of images, images that were mostly scraped from the World Wide Web. Some prompts are getting pretty complex, specifying composition, genre, and particular artists' styles. Like this one. Realistic detailed face portrait of a handsome futuristic Viking warrior in alien cyberpunk armor by Alphonse Mucha, Ayami Kojima, Amano, Greg Hildebrandt, and Mark Brooks, male, masculine, art nouveau, cyberpunk, neo, gothic, gothic, character concept, design. Some are simpler with tech specs like DSLR photo still of a jar filled with lava, lens 8.5 mm, f-stop 1.8. There are plenty of abstract questions. Is generative art real art? Does it compete with the finest works of human imagination? Is it a great teaching tool for new artists? Or is it just slick, computerized cutting and pasting of stolen work? What are the copyright and privacy issues? What are the ethical issues of making art from fragments scraped off the public internet? Still, media creation is a very practical, very competitive field. The June 2022 cover of Cosmopolitan magazine was created with Dolly 2, and they wrote a good article about it. A painting made with Midjourney won first prize in an art competition. It was the Colorado State Fair, not Art Basel, but still. The major advertising agencies and global brands are experimenting, waiting for some copyright clarity. The very latest developments from Google researchers combine text prompts with image inputs, so you can input your own sketches, or photos, or even modify images created by different AIs. Scan three or four photos of your dog and see what he'd look like in different settings. Or get your pooch's snapshots reinterpreted in the style of Van Gogh, Rembrandt, or Renoir. Change the colors and backgrounds of your product shots, or reimagine Old Rover as a bear or a lion or a hippo. We've seen Vermeer's famous Burl with a pearl earring, but now we can make AI generate the rest of the scene beyond the picture frame. This looks more like production to me. Imagine doing any of those image changes with today's pre-AI tools. 
Since way before the first Macintosh, aspiring artists have adopted and adapted the latest imaging tech, they've transformed it with their talents and good ideas, and they've crafted new worlds of graphic communications and new ways of seeing. CTE educators and their many partners from the industry have helped them along the way. Some of us are putting together an interest group to study these MU art inventions and help develop the career paths of young people entering the field. Join us, CTE industry partners, K-12 and higher ed teachers and administrators, researchers and developers working together to help guide the latest tech magic into something wonderful. Drop an email to artificial at ICTE.us with your comments, your concerns, and your contact information.